Ladies and gentlemen, Senate Minority Leader, Senator Troy Jackson. Good evening, brothers and sisters. How you folks doing tonight? I'm Troy Jackson from Allegash, and I have the great privilege of representing the good people of Northern Rusta County in the Maine State Senate. <clears throat> I also have the real privilege and distinct honor of serving my colleagues in the Maine State Senate as Democratic leader. And on tonight, here in Lewiston, it's a real honor. And I want to thank the Maine Democratic Party and everyone who works for them for putting on this event and for inviting me to speak tonight. Looking out at all of you, the one thing is clear. This is what democracy is supposed to look like. <laughs> Mainers from all over the state, from all different backgrounds coming together for the right reasons. The world may have changed for the worse, but we are going to change it for the better. <clears throat> So, you know, I always like to talk about where we are and where we're headed. Democrats, for a long time, have been the party that talks about working families and the middle class. But over the past few years, we've seen something strange. We've seen the Republican Party gradually change their tone. And I don't mean that they've shifted their priorities away from propping up the wealthy elite at the expense of the rest of us. The Trump tax plan certainly, certainly showed that. See, they've changed their words. They've really stolen our language. And they're doing this because they know that democratic values and messages mean something to Mainers. They're now saying things like, working people vote Republican. And things that are even more hilarious, like, we know we're not reporters, but you can trust us. Just before they serve up a pile of fake news bigger than anything that a uh, trucker special at Dice Art you could ever get. <laughs> They're co opting our language and values and repackaging their old ideas with a splash of this crooked fake news. And they're trying to pass off their elitist policies, benefiting the wealthiest among us, and pretending that it's tax relief for our families. The truth of the matter is, is what they do for families, they do for the elite. And what they say they do for small businesses, they actually do for big corporations. And what they say they do for Maine is really the greed for themselves. And it's wrong, and it's insulting, they are screwing the most vulnerable people and hard-working folks to achieve their elitist agenda. All of it leading to broken promises while holding our families, small businesses, and the entire state back. And this is why, when given the chance to prove who we are, we mustn't squander it. You know, 2018 is looking like it could be a year of unprecedented gains for Democrats. And here in Maine, we could take back the Maine Senate, send a progressive the second CD, and finally, after eight long, 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 long years, we could finally elect a Democrat as governor. <clears throat> but it's really important, because these victories could be fleeting if we don't learn from our past mistakes and prove our mettle before the elections have fallen. We mustn't fail when given the chance to recapture the hearts and minds of Mainers, working people, and the dreams that they have, the dreams that we all have. Because it's our values, it's our beliefs, and it's our party that actually gives a damn about working class people. <clears throat> So 
So I want to talk a little, about, a little bit about the situation in Augusta right now. You know, House Republican leaders have talked about caring for our seniors and for Mainers with disabilities, but when it came time to do the hard work, they used direct care workers at a bargaining chip to launch new attacks on the minimum wage. And now we are in a crisis situation because hardworking direct care providers all over Maine are in danger of a pay cut in July if Republicans continue to refuse to do their jobs. Democrats believe that direct care workers deserve to earn a fair wage for the critical services they provide for some of Maine's most vulnerable populations. And that'll never change. So now, both the governor and Republican leaders talk about providing tax relief for seniors and families, but their latest tax proposal greatly benefited the top 20 wealthiest Maine families and rewarded out-of-state companies at the expense of average Mainers. It is really unreal, hard to believe, how much money Republicans want to take from Maine taxpayers and ship out of state across the border. So as Democrats, we said that this is unacceptable. If we are going to rewrite the tax code, the first thing that we need to do is create more property tax relief. And that is exactly what we did. We drafted a better plan that increased and expanded the property tax fairness credit. And with wages, in 2016, I remember standing on a stage much like this and pleading, pleading with all of us to go out and fight for a minimum wage. And 55% of Maine voters passed a law all across the state to raise the minimum wage. <clears throat> and finally, at the start of this year, 59,000 Mainers got a much needed raise of $1,000. But earlier this session, the legislature was still having to debate this. And we're proud that we've defeated another measure to roll back minimum wage and an even worse effort to, to make an attempt to institute a training wage for young people. Because Mainers were pretty clear when they voted that nobody who works full time should be living in poverty. <clears throat> and I try and understand it, and I try and put myself sometimes in their place, but it seems like the reality is that they don't know what it's like to live in poverty, work hard and barely scrape by. They don't know what it's like to live without health care because you don't have health insurance and can't afford to see a doctor. And they don't know what it's like that no matter how hard you work or how hard you try, you'll never get ahead because the deck is stacked against you. And I'm so damn tired of lawmakers who pretend to be the voice of Royal Maine when their voting record shows otherwise. Because to be honest, I don't know how you can look someone in the face saying one thing and then turning around and voting another. You know, it's just not the way I was raised in Rusty County because my parents and my community taught me to be a person of my word. And it's something I take very seriously. And it's a huge part of why I got into politics in the first place and eventually became a Democrat. See, I came to the Democratic Party because it's a party that stood up for the things that I believed in, the things that mattered to me and my family. And that's why I'm really so honored to be here tonight, because this is an important election. See, I'm a fifth generation logger. Tired of being taken advantage of by large corporations and large landowners who's always held their li my livelihood in the palm of their hands. And I'm tired of having to compete with cheap Canadian labor. And I'm tired of having to leave my family every week just to earn a paycheck so we could heat our house and put food on the table. 
I was tired of fight, fighting that same fight we'd watched our fathers lose and their fathers lose. So I'd fight my family and other logging families and other logging communities have known for far too long for generations. You know, it's going to be 20 years this fall that me and a dozen other people from my town said enough is enough and blocked the road on the Canadian border to send a message to our leaders in Augusta and Washington, D.C. And that message is pretty clear, pretty simple, really. You know, who is looking out for us? Who is looking out for the working class? And if you don't look out for us, then I sure as hell will. <clears throat> So as Democrats, we wanted to create a Maine where individuals have the tools and opportunities they need to be successful. From access to quality, affordable health care to good paying jobs. We are committed to implementing Medicaid expansion so more Mainers have access to health care than they need to work and live. And we are committed to ensuring that full-time work means adequate pay whether that's fighting for gender pay equity or a fair minimum wage. <clears throat> and we are committed to property tax relief so that people can afford to stay in their homes. You know, Mainers are smart. They're hardworking, resilient people. And it's time to create a Maine that works for them, not against them. And that's why I want to talk about where we're headed. We can't forget that so many of the working people have been weaponized to vote against other working people are not our enemies, even if their party is. They are our friends and our neighbors. And they make Maine what it is, just as we do. Some of the people I most love and trust vote very differently than I do. And I know that if not for a few similar moments in my life, I could have been right there with them at the ballot box. And I mention that because I do not believe we should write anyone off. We cannot find progress by fixating on who someone voted for yesterday. We've got to find progress when we can do our best to share in who they could be tomorrow. In asking the world around us to be a better place, we must seek to better ourselves each day, and so do better our own party. You know, the last few years, and even just today, the media love to discuss a narrative of drama and tension within the Democratic Party. They characterize it as a battle for supremacy between opposing wings. They characterize it as a war, when it really is something far more important. It's an exchange of ideas amongst us, and that's something that's okay. <laughs> sometimes it's been tense and uneasy, and sometimes in the future it will, be, it will continue to be. But I always believed that this period of self-reflection and internal debate would honestly make us stronger and bring us closer together. And I think, honestly, hasn't done that because since the election of Donald Trump, we have all met dozens and dozens of new activists stirred to take part in their sincere belief in collective action to better the world. And to them, 2016 is irrelevant. To these new activists and to those of us who have been around for a while, the trials of the Democratic Party have turned into something stronger than it ever was before. Together, with all of you in this room and folks around this state, I know that we can take back the Maine Senate, keep the House, send a progressive in the second district, certainly keep our honorable Shelley Pingree, and finally put a Democrat in the Blaine House. Yeah. 
So let's all go out and elect candidates who won't just say that they fight for Maine people and their values, but they actually go forth and do it. You know, earlier I heard about Lewiston and the strength of Lewiston. And, and that's why, like I said, I'm so honored to be here. Heard about the canals and the rivers. And it got me to thinking. You know, I live on the St. John River, just below where the Allagash puts in. And, it, and times of year, just like right now, you know, we see the high water, the strength in that, how, how there's so much power in that, that river going down. And, and it loses that power as it dissipates, as it breaks across, when it goes its separate ways. But when you keep it on a straight line, there's nothing that can stop it. And that's why, you know, this to me is really important, why I'm so glad to speak here tonight, is because when those turbulent rivers meet, they crash. But downstream, those waters run together over the floor of time, and only together does that torrent find peace. Only together does a mighty river find the flow necessary to make it out to sea. Only together does a strong current erode the roughness of this earth. We are an ever building, ever more perfect current as a Democratic Party. And I look out in this convention floor and I don't see sides. I don't see factions. I do not see division. I see unity. I see humility. I see self-awareness. I see a Democratic Party fusing its other together, healing its wounds, mending its bones, that it might never, ever break again. And I see a Democratic Party more progressive than ever before, more accepting than ever before. I see a Democratic Party that represents regions of Maine like it never has before. And I see a Democratic Party that's more progressive more ready to serve working families of Maine than it ever had before. I see that river building, flowing, uh, uh, the power of it. I see a blue wave like we've never seen before if we don't let it come apart. Let's stand together and elect Democrats across this state. After the primary, we need unity. We need to come together because we can't stand this shit no more. Let's do this. Uh.